nothing like a sip of Java when the old... Hey, whoop, get in a cup of spade there. Swap an old bean. around this party, Miss Andrews. It'll make you feel much better. You know, if this storm don't stop pretty soon, I'm going to do something about it. And you do something about it, right, Jim? Then I do something. Me? Say, I'm the best storm stopper that ever stopped the storm. Why, once when your pa and me was bringing a windjammer down the... You can stop the storm. You so, uh, stop you, don't, you don't want to hear my story, huh? That's enough, Cole Andrews, just for that. I ain't gonna do nothing about it. Are you gonna stop your son, no Did you hear that, Miss Andrews? Your own son dares sit there and contradict Bill Kyler. The best sailor that ever... Oh, now, don't you worry, Mrs. Andrews. I can't help it, Bill. This thing just terrifies me. So... Oh, Never done me no dirt, Miss Andrews. No, your husband neither. Then Harris finds me. You know, he's been up that wheel for four hours now, Bill. What kind of medium? Well, I'll go up and see. Well, he'll probably kick me right in the seat of the pants. I like the ship. Now, my name ain't Bill Clark. Oh. Come on, quick. Get it. It's over in the boat's bow. You haven't got a chance. Come on, bring the line here. Give up, darling. Come, come now. Come, we should be thankful we're seeing. You know, that's just what I was thinking. Now, when me and Pelican Joe one time... I'm hungry, Bill. Oh, is that nice? Of course you're hungry. We're all of us hungry. But that ain't half as bad as being thirsty. Now, just think, if you were thirsty... I'm thirsty, too. Thirsty and hungry both? Why, I never heard of such a thing. Cole, I'm ashamed of you. I can't help it, Bill. I love you. Right, you. you love my mommy. As I am, Bill. Now, listen, Cole. You're a man. Every inch of you. Don't say you're afraid of the ocean. Don't say it. Look. What is it? Just a lot of wet. Get out of here. Get away, you ocean. Get there. I fixed them. Bill. Look! A ship! Looks like Storm got somebody, Captain. A lifeboat with four people. That's their hard luck. We're not running a hotel. But there's a woman, Cap. Give me that glass. Come on, pick him up. Yes, sir. All right, man, come on, snap into it. popped up just as I was a going down. Ooh. Hadn't been for him, I don't know where we'd have gone. Very interesting. Yeah, I don't want any more of it. 
Oh, I don't care about myself. But, you know, with the wife and the little kid there along. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. I'm tired, dear. If you don't mind, I'd like to. Sure, Mrs. Andrews. I've got my cabin all fixed up for you. Here you are. Right through here. Sit down, Captain. Hungry men should never leave the table hungry. I'll be back shortly and hear the rest of your story. Thank you, Captain. I don't know why, but him and spaghetti are two things I could never get used to. Ooh, that's a pretty nice sort of fella. Don't mind, I'll take another leaf and some of that boiled beef. Huh? Oh, no, no, no. oh, yes, he does. You get out of here, lay off the chair. I'm going to pour Get your chin tamped, bitch. Get away from that door. Next Christmas. Are you going to get away from that door? Not as long as I'm able to stand up, I ain't. when you get to know me better. You'll pay for this someday. I don't live someday. I live now. Come on, get in here. Get in here, boy. Get in here. <laughs> A pleasant voyage, Captain! <laughs>
about all there is of importance, Mr. Day, Dad. It says that the patrol did splendid work in rescuing the passengers of the Salvador and that sort of thing. Did it mention nothing about my son? Sure, that cool. Oh, it mentions my name, if that's what you mean. Don't mention nothing about you rescuing them women passengers? Who told you that? Oh, who hasn't? <laughs> oh, you. You're a glorious liar, Cole. Betty read that article to me while she was fixing my dinner. I'll be fixing her. Sure you will. Fixing her up with the name of Andrew. So that I may have the pleasure of calling her daughter. Ah, I'm proud of you, Cole. I'm proud because you didn't let the steam me kill. Done lots of things to you. Took away the only thing that. But I'll get him. I'll get him, Cole. I'll find him. Oh, Dad, now come on, snap out of it. Easy. That's better. Lucky stiff, Cole Andrews is. Why, we do the decorating, he gets the afternoon off. Oh, have the whole week off for my dough. The way that monkey worked on the Salvador wreck ain't nobody's business. He's a queer duck, that bird. The way he acts, you'd think he was scared stiff. And when he gets into action, wow. Wow is right. Wish I was just as scared I'd own this place. You and me both. You remember when he hey, went... Hey, Shorty. Pass me that letter. All right, good now. Hey, come on, 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 Here's the medal we're going to give Cole Andrews tonight. Oh, boy, that's oh, a nice man. Man. Well, if that don't make his old man proud of him, then I'm a gibbering baboon. It will, but that won't keep you from being one. <laughs> <laughs> boy, that's a piece. <laughs> Sorry, son. I don't want to make you unhappy. Yeah, you're a swell dad. Betty. Hi, fellas. Hi, yourself. Betty. Oh, oh, thank you, Betty. Thank you. I've been all over this bird trying to find buttons for Cole's uniform. And did I have a job? The next time you go around saving people, try wearing your old uniform. Cole Andrews. What's that on the front of your shirt? Hey! Say, listen, you. Say, what listen, you. No wife of mine can use slang like that. Understand? You mean no savvy, nothing. And furthermore, I'm not your wife. Well, what do you suppose I've been saving two dollars for? I don't know. What have you been saving two dollars for? Just, Just to, to marry, marry you. You. <laughs> you should see my costume for the dance tonight. Boy and brother, could I write a book? And there you go. Some more of your cousin's slang. Say, if you go to New York to see her again, I'll take you over my knees. Oh, I won't, honest. Good. What? The promise of the kiss? Both. I won't because my cousin's coming here. She's what? My slang slinging cousin is coming here. And what's more, she's coming this afternoon. Oh, banana berries. Cut out the slang. Say, get a little bit. Dear darling cousin, that's I. I've never seen the Hick Town before, so I thought I might drive up and look the menagerie over. 
Don't you love that? No, I don't love that. Or I wouldn't like her either. Tonight, I suppose you want to trail along the dance with us and spoil everything. I thought it might be for the best. You take up so much of my time. Might give me an opportunity to meet some other nice young men. Well, at least you admit that I'm a nice young man. Oh, did I? How stupid of me. Betty Merton. Stop it. Stop it. I'll scream, I'll tell you. You don't. And what else? Precious. Oh, well, please continue. I love you more than, more than four sacks of potatoes. Oh, my stock's falling. Last night it was five sacks and three barrels of dried herring. Well, you didn't give me a chance to finish. I love you more than anything in the world. What about that other sack of potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you just love that? <laughs> that grand material. Oh, there she is now. It's Estelle, my cousin. Bring your coat over now so the button's on it. I can't wait. I'm going to get the coat for her, Dad. That's right. That's right, boy. Betty. Oh, gee, it's good to see you. I thought you lived here. I do. Oh, oh. you're easy, will you, with these permanent eight bucks a pack. <laughs> gee, you're something to look at, cuz. Well, a gentleman in your embalmed city. Don't think so. Oh, no. What's this thing? Believe it or not, it's a masquerade costume. I'm I going thought... to shindig tonight. I thought that sort of thing had gone out with warts and pug dogs. <laughs> Well, do all the men around here look like uh, animal crackers? All except one. What a curiosity he must be. You can judge for yourself. Here he comes now. Here's my coat, Betty. Don't forget to make those buttons stand up. See? Mm, 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 like that. The last time you had them sewed down so tight I couldn't get them through the buttonholes. Listen, you just mm, mm, mm yourself back to the house. You can't tell me a thing about sewing. He certainly could tell me. How do you do? I'm Estelle Davis, a cousin to the little girl next to you who doesn't know a thing about introducing people. She turns cartwheels, too, and once she cooked an egg. Mr. Cole Andrews, darling. How do you do? Well, now that you mention it, excellent. Although in the winter, I do uh, suffer dreadfully. You'll be ready at seven? Try and stop me. I'm pleased to have met you. Really? Some makeup I got on. Here. What's the funny thing? Yep. Nobody will ever recognize me with this makeup on. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Poogie. Well, blowout, eh, Poogie? <laughs> That's the makeup, Poogie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're fooling them all right. <laughs> Ladies and 
gentlemen, we are gathered here tonight. <laughs> Like a two-year-old. Oh. How does Betty? Venus had run up for a second. Don't I know? Mm. I'll run along, son. Have your fun, boy. All right. Now you're sure you got that right? Yep. When you say, and this honored gentleman is none other than Cole Andrews, I come in with a medal in the palms of my hands and say, Mr. Andrews, Brother and friend, I present you with this token of our steam. Not steam, esteem. Let's oh. try it again. Now, Mr. Andrew, brother and friend. Listen, Poogie, I've got to get out of here. They're going to present me with a medal and... Well, well I don't want to stand up there and look foolish in this outfit. I'm going to go over to the house and get into my uniform. Hey, wait a minute. This may be a dance, but don't forget you're still on duty. Yes, I know it, but I won't be gone long. Listen, if they start to pull this thing off before I get back, stall them off with one of those stale stories of yours. Okay. Hey, what do you mean my stories are stale? Unlocked. You may come in. Come in. Oh, pardon me. Why, it's quite all right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... Sorry? What for? Well, I... Would you mind giving me my coat? Surely. But not till I've finished with it. See, I have just this one more button. Gee, it's awfully nice of you. But I thought Betty was going well, to... Well, I had nothing else to do. Besides, I kind of like this sort of thing. You do? Well, I thought you said... It was a big, bad girl from the city. That's what you thought. Now, didn't you? No, I didn't mean that. But I... Now, I have two things to forgive you for. Two? I don't understand. No? Well, you just sit right here. And I'll tell you. Now, of course you weren't rude to me this afternoon. Yes, I guess I was. I thought about that afterwards. Really? And you felt sorry for me? Sorry? Uh-huh. Well, yes and no. I guess I was a bit ashamed of myself. Oh, you shouldn't have been. No? Well, you just said that... It... Women always do. They only know what they mean to say after they've said it. And then they aren't quite sure. Well, I don't know much about women. You surprise me. See, I'll have to be getting back. You're finished with my coat, aren't you? Quite finished. Are you listening to my story? Well, the cyclone blew so hard that when the wind cleared away, it left the post hole sticking that far out of the ground. <laughs> I don't think that's funny. Besides, I want to know where Cole is. Oh, uh, 
Cole. Uh, uh, well, maybe he's playing a joke on somebody. You know, he does that sometimes. Well, once there were four fellows, and Cole... Ladies and, and gentlemen, we came here not only to enjoy the dance and each other's company, but for a more important reason. We have in our midst a young man who's honored himself among men. He's conquered where others fail. On thinking of self, he braved the terrors of death that others might live. The honored gentleman that I refer to is none other than Cole Andrews. <laughs> Mr. Blue just tells me that Cole got scared and hid out on us. <laughs> So I'll tell you what I'm going to do in that case. I'm going to call his father instead. Uh, Captain Andrews, will you please step forward? <laughs> Captain Andrews, you're the father of a real hero. And to show you that we mean it, we're going to present you with a medal dedicating his bravery. <laughs> say friend and brother. Oh, when we have the next fire. Everybody in this room knows what a what a thrill this is to me. Cole's a real boy. I'm proud of him. You know, for a while I, I, I thought he might be afraid of the sea. He had a right to be. When he was a... a Hey. Oh. You take number one, Manning. Hold it. Come on, what's going on with that? Oh, Dad, that's crazy. Cool is here now, isn't he? Oh, he must be here somewhere. He never missed a call in his life. He's here, Dad. There he goes, oh, now. I knew it.
Take care of them? Yes. Captain hasn't called reported yet. Not yet, and I don't understand it, Betty. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain. But you see, I was... We'll talk about that later. Now get busy. Yes, sir. Someone give me a hand. He's heavy. Here, here. Let, let, let me help. Let me help you. Now, steady. Good hold. There. There you are. Here, somebody. Take this woman. Cole, Cole, my son, my, my boy, I'm proud of you, proud of you. I wish you could be, Dad, but I've done something that I'll never forgive myself for the rest of my life. I didn't know that heaven was as lovely as this. I beg your pardon? Nothing. Is everybody safe? They're checking now. Is your head hurting you? My head? No. <laughs> it's my heart that's got the jump. The excitement, probably. You'll be all right. Sure. I think I'd better like it here. <laughs> Who was it that laughed? Get you down? Why, is something wrong? What was Cole doing here? 
cold. Oh, you mean the only unanimal cracker man? What was he doing here? Betty. Oh, cut out the baby talk and answer me. Why, yes, he was here. He came after his coat. And you gave it to him? Naturally. I was undressed, and I uh, handed it to him out the window. You lie. Betty Murphy, don't you dare. I'll dare anything. He came here in this room, didn't he? Well, yes, now that I come to think of it. He was. Now that you come to think of it. Estelle, you tell me everything. I beg your pardon. You'll beg for more than that. Tell me. And, and, well, I, I guess that's about all. I, Betty, I'm sorry. Why, I, I, Betty. Don't talk to me. I don't want to see you again. But, Betty, you doesn't... I'm so hurt to get out of here. Get out of here. Tough break, Captain, huh? Rescuing the man who came here to take your job. Orders are orders, Mr. Drake. You will take charge immediately? No, not right away. You see, I'm in no hurry, not being used to getting shipwrecks. I'll get around to it in a day or two. I'll have everything in order. Naturally. By the way, who was that girl who was taking care of me the other night? I guess you mean Betty Merton. Maybe that's her name. A lovely girl. I'd like to call on her and thank her. Where does she live? Third house on the north side of Bowling Street. Hey. She's engaged, you know. To who? Somebody in town? Cole Andrews. Cole Andrews? Isn't he the boy who disobeyed orders the other night? Well, yes. But oddly enough, he's the best man we have. He's pretty repentant about that. Sure. We all make mistakes. Glad I met you, Captain. Call on me for anything you want. Once upon a time, there was a pole cat. And this pole cat I'm telling you about dearly loved biting things in the back. So one day, this pole cat... So, I guess, I guess the Japo-Chinese thing is settled by now, eh? You know, we, we've got to make this newsboy throw the paper up on the porch. Fog gets kind of damp. You... You haven't... You haven't heard anything more about the harbor bill, have you, Cole? Supposed to have been put through yesterday. No, I haven't. Well, so long, Dad. I'll be back in time to fix your dinner. Son. Don't let it get you. Everything will turn out all right. I'm afraid it's too late. I'm washed up where Betty's concerned. Oh, it can't be. We've got to have Betty here with us. Your old dad loves her too, you know, Cole. I'm only asking you to go out with me. Because I want to show you a good time. I owe you something for being so kind to me. You may consider it paid, Mr. Drake. Anyone would have done it. Still, I see no reason why I shouldn't accept the invitation. Now you're talking. Suppose I go get the car. Oh, don't go yet. I really am enjoying the conversation. And there's lots of time. Sure, that's okay with me. Oh, 
Oh, I... Oh, sorry. Oh, my, my fault, sir. I'm blind, you see. And I'm always getting in people's way. That's too bad. Say, haven't I seen you somewhere before? Oh, that's just possible. I've been somewhere before. Used to be a sailor, you know. So was I. Yeah? Yeah. I was master of the old Santa Smila. Santa Smila? Yes. Say, wasn't she wrecked some 20 odd years ago? Right you are. I was aboard at the time with my wife and little boy. We were picked up later by a tramp sailing ship. That ended my career. Because there I, I got this. Say, old man, I'm sorry. I've got to be running along. I thought I'd seen you before, but I guess it was my mistake. I... So long. Betty. I told you never to talk to me again. I've ordered you from this house and you won't go, but don't speak to me. Well, I'm going to talk to you and Hal. I saw you talking to that man, heard everything you said, and every word was cutting right into your heart. I know his kind. <laughs> I ought to. That's why I'm what I am. But you're not going to be. You leave me alone. I'll make my own way without any help from you. You're not going to get help. I've been doing the other thing so long, I wouldn't know anything about it. But I'll tell you what you are going to get. I'm going to Cole Andrews now. I'm going to ask him to marry me. Understand? Either you change your mind about him or you're going to lose him altogether. Then go. He's your property and I don't want anything to do with him. And if we don't have our troubles with this new captain, then my name ain't Poopy Blue. Oh, what's the difference? Ah, oh, come on, snap out of this, sucker. This and the call ain't the most important thing in life. I heard Keeler telling the new captain that he didn't hold anything against you for slipping up. But I wouldn't let it happen again if I were you. That guy looks to me like a mangy, double-crossing... Pretty hard work you fellas are using. Not by any chance talking about me, were you? No, sir. Good. Just a second. Your name is Cole Andrews, isn't it? Yes, sir. You're through. What do you mean? I mean I'm not running this patrol with incompetence like yourself. Why? Why, this is my first slip-up. Captain Keeler said yeah, that... Yeah, I know, but I have to be captain now. Anything more you'd like to say, Mr. Andrews? No. Well, I have. I want to talk to you. Pretty girl can always talk to me. I guess right. Your kind and an octopus differ in only one thing. An octopus can't wear a collar. I don't know what you're driving at, but I like the way you stop. You love the finish. Listen here, Mug. You stay away from Betty Murphy. She's too good for your kind. You're liable to find yourself blown up someday in enough pieces to spell Cincinnati. Well, I do. It'll be the first time I've ever spelled anything right. <laughs> Doesn't this mean anything to you? Nothing. Tangled up between your ears somewhere, isn't it, that this bold weevil's taking Betty out? Why are you doing this? Because I'm no good. The same as you'll be if you don't do something about it. Oh, I've done enough. You've done nothing. I'm the party of the first part. Estelle, will you marry me? Now I'll tell one. Once there was a traveling sale. But I mean it. I'd... Get your mitt off me. I wouldn't marry you. Not if you owned a cranberry farm. No, not if you owned three of them. But you said that... I know. I do cartwheels. Once I cooked an egg. You're the egg. And a pretty bad one, too.
Kind of late, eh, son? Oh, I'm sorry. Jesus, this well of you. I'm hungry as a bear. Oh. Uh, then let's go to it. Uh, maybe you think I ain't a little empty, too. Now, no more of this rough stuff. All, All right. right. Yeah. I heard him, I tell you. I heard him. This thing will get you down if you're not careful. And then what'll I do without you? Why, I couldn't turn a hand without you around. Come on, put a smile on your face. Come on. Come on now. That's better. You know, I, I, I could have sworn Afraid your old man's getting a little off. I'm sorry, my boy. Forgive me. Say, hey, our dinner's getting cold. What do you say we put on the nose bag? Yes. All right. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, we like it. Don't blame me. Oh, it's 11 o'clock. I had no idea it was that late. Where are the folks? On a bed? No, Mother's visiting her sister in Dunbar. Where's the old man? He passed away three years ago. I'm sorry. I would say something like this. Oh, that's all right. You didn't know. That means you and me? You're alone, huh? Well... Provided you don't count the visitors. Sorry to bother you. My room was so stuffy, I decided to sit in the living room. I always sit up so dreadfully late. Can't you see that your sister has company? Cousin. Oddly enough, I can't see anything. Estelle, please go to your room. When I do, you're going with me. This is my home. You don't own anything, including your right mind. Why, I... Please. Say, listen, I'm not up on my English, but I gather that you want me to pull anchor. Is that it? Graham is the word. Listen here, Betty. Now, you've gone far enough. This monkey ain't fit. Oh, Estelle, get out. Do you understand? I won't have you or anyone else telling me what I should do. I don't have to tell you what I think about you. You already know the words. That goes both ways. Sweet girl, that cousin of yours. I'm very fond of her. How you like... How you like them beans, son? Hmm. Been cooking ever since you left this morning. Well, they're fine, Dad. Best I ever tasted. <laughs> they ain't nothing to what I used to cook when I was a sailor. You take, you take a, a ham off. Come in. Oh, good evening. Oh, I've got to tell you something. I'd rather not hear it. Quit being a sap. Oh, I don't think I've met this lady, Cole. You haven't. I'm Betty's cousin, and oh. I came here to talk about Betty. I said I'd rather not hear it. Something about Betty? Plenty. Right now, she... That's enough from you. I guess you'll find it out sometime, Dad. So it might as well be now. Betty and I are through. Washed up. I'm fired from the patrol. And Betty is keeping company with the man that fired me. Just a minute. <laughs> you know this can't be. Go ahead and tell him the rest. You're so brave. Tell him why she's doing it. You should talk about that. All right, I'll tell him. And I won't mince words either. <laughs> Dad. Oh, did you hear? That's the man. <laughs> it's him. 
It's him, Cole. You see, I was right. That is the man. That is... Wait a minute, Dad. Who's in that house? It's straight. That's why I came. It's a new captain. Cole. Yes. Oh, come on. Oh. Come on, now. Let's be friendly. You're going to like me sooner or later. No. <laughs> Leave me alone, please. Oh, listen. Now, you wanted to make a game, didn't you? You wanted to make your boyfriend jealous? Let's make him real jealous. Oh, let me. You. Oh. Dad. Now. Now I can rest. Dad. You darling. What else? I love you more than four sacks of potatoes. Is that all? Five barrels of dried herring, six bushels of wheat, and a hundred pounds of lump sugar. (laughs) (laughs) 